What's up everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here moving on with the next concept in managerial accounting. I'm now going to talk about applied overhead in this video. And this is a big concept. You're going to see it come up a lot in this course. And to begin to explain it, I want to go over the same example that I went over in the product cost versus period cost video. If you remember that far back in that video, I mentioned that you're a car manufacturer and there's going to be different parts of your company. So the manufacturing part, you're going to have a factory, right? And within that factory, if you remember product costs, are incurred product costs being manufacturing costs and there's three types of product costs there's direct material there's direct labor and there's manufacturing overhead and then there's also period costs which are non-manufacturing costs so like selling costs and min just any general other expenses that are not incurred in the factory or period costs but in this video i'm going to sort of ignore the period costs because when we're talking about applied overhead we're talking about applied manufacturing overhead so we're going to be focusing on this product cost right here and an interesting question i want to ask is at what price should we sell each car let's pretend that in this factory we're only making one type of car so at what price should we sell each car well we definitely want to sell it at a price where we're going to make a profit in order for our company to survive. So how about this for an answer? Let's say we have to sell it for more than the product cost per car, right? And probably a lot more than the product cost per car because if you remember, we also have to cover the period expenses. But as I mentioned, I'm going to sort of ignore those in this video. So let's just say that we have to sell it for more than the product cost per car. So the direct material, the direct labor, the manufacturing overhead per car. So if we look at the product cost per car, let's fill in some numbers over here. So direct materials, let's say that it takes $10,000 of materials per car. Direct labor, let's say that it takes 100 hours of labor to make each car, and let's say that each hour of labor, we have to pay $30. So 30 times 100, that would give us $3,000 of direct labor per car. And here's the question. How do we apply manufacturing overhead on a per car basis? Because direct materials and direct labor, if you remember, these are direct costs, hence why there's direct in the name, or they are uh, traceable, right? So it's very easy to see how much material is used per car, how much labor is used per car. But manufacturing overhead, it's not directly traceable. It's not a direct cost. If you remember, manufacturing overhead is stuff like uh, the factory building depreciation or maybe the factory supervisor salary or the utilities. You can't really trace it to each car. So how do we get this over here? Well, an intuitive way If we want the manufacturing overhead per car, what we can do is we can take the total manufacturing overhead that we incur, let's say for the year, and we could divide it by the number of cars that we manufacture in the year. Right? That would be a pretty intuitive way to get the manufacturing overhead per car. So let's say in this example, the total manufacturing overhead for the year was $156 million. And let's say that we manufacture 12,000 cars. So when you divide those numbers, you would end up getting 13,000. 
right? So that's the manufacturing overhead allocated or applied, right, per car, on a per car basis. So this would be filled in as 13,000, right? So this is a little bit more work to get that number over here. And so those are the total product costs. If we total them up, what would we get? We would get 26,000. And so going back to our question here, at what price should we sell each car? Well, definitely more than the product cost per car. So in this specific example, we should sell it for more than 26,000. So at least 26,000 in order for us to make a profit. Again, it's probably gonna be a lot over the 26,000 because we're gonna have to cover the period costs as well. But for now, let's just say it has to be greater than 26,000. Now I wanna dig a little deeper in the process of how we got that manufacturing overhead per car. Now, in a perfect world, this is actually a good way to do it, right? Take the total overhead divided by the number of cars, we get the manufacturing overhead per car, right? Pretty simple. But in reality, what are the issues with this method that could come up? Well, the first issue is that we have to wait until period end. So the period could be anything, a month, a year, the previous, the example that I just did was for a year. But we have to wait until the period end to get this data over here, right? So that's an issue. Why is that an issue? Because customers, if they come into our store and they wanna buy a car, we can't just say to them, hey, we gotta wait for a year so we can know what our total overhead is and how many cars we manufactured and then we know how to apply manufacturing overhead per car and then we can quote you a correct price. Right? It doesn't really work like that. When a customer comes in, they want to buy a car at the beginning of the year, you have to be able to give them a price right there and then. So that's one issue, right? We've got to wait until period end to get the actual data. Another issue is what if we're selling multiple products? Right, so instead of, let's say, manufacturing one type of car, let's say that we manufacture three types of cars. So maybe like a low-end car, a medium, uh, medium-end car, and then a high-end car, so like a sports car. Well, if you think about it, if we just total up the number of cars, and that's gonna be the denominator, then the manufacturing overhead per car is gonna be the same for all cars, for all the products. And that's not really realistic because most likely the higher end car is gonna use more manufacturing overhead than the lower end car, right? So like the direct materials and the direct labor will probably be different, but the manufacturing overhead will probably be different as well because maybe, for example, the higher end car you're using more machinery, right? So you're gonna be using more utilities of the factory to make it. So this denominator over here, number of cars, it's not really appropriate to use if you are selling multiple products, right? If you maybe had one product you're selling the whole time, this may work out for you, but if you have multiple products, then to apply overhead, this denominator is not usually gonna be the number of products. So how can we fix these two issues over here? So with this first one, wait until period end to get the data. What we can do instead is we can estimate data at beginning of period. All right, so we can do that instead. So instead of getting the actual data at the end, we can estimate the data at the beginning of the period. So we could estimate what that total overhead is gonna be. So we may have to look at the history of our company and see what the manufacturing overhead's been per year and then try to come up with as good of an estimate for this upcoming year. Now, what's the issue with estimating? Well, 
you're going to have, not more, but uh, less accurate data, right? Less precise data. But the trade-off is that you're going to have more relevant or um, maybe another word is more timely data. It's going to be more in line with when customers are actually coming in to your store. And if you remember when I talked about the difference between financial accounting and managerial accounting, financial accounting, I mentioned that it's more about accuracy, more about precision versus managerial accounting. It's more about relevance or timeliness of information, right? So that's one fix for this issue. What about a fix for this issue? where we're going to be selling multiple products. Well, what we can do, we got to change this denominator, right? It can't be number of cars. So what we can say is the denominator can be, let's say something that is more correlated with overhead, irrelevant of product or irrelevant of type of product. So as I mentioned, with the low end car versus the high end car, the high end car is probably going to be using more machinery than the low end car. So it's going to be using more manufacturing overhead. So maybe machine hours is a better option to use for that denominator. Another common one is the actual direct labor hours because the more labor there is going on in the factory, the more supervision there may have to be, and supervision is under manufacturing overhead. The more utilities are used in the factory, that's manufacturing overhead. So these are the two most common um, denominators used when applying manufacturing overhead. But it doesn't have to just be these two, but I'm just going to leave it at these two for now. And so when I say the denominator can be something that is more correlated with overhead or relevant of product, a better word for this something is cost driver. So what is driving that overhead? And again, you may have to go and look at the history of your company and maybe run a regression with overhead and uh, versus machine hours or maybe overhead and direct labor hours and see which one of those gives you maybe the highest R squared value, right? And then you would use that as the denominator as the um, cost driver. And there can also be, we're going to do questions like this too, where there are co uh, different cost drivers in different departments. So going back to our car example, maybe the department where the car is actually made, the appropriate cost drivers, the machine hours, but maybe where the car is painted, right? That's manually done. So direct labor hours would be more appropriate then. So you could have different cost drivers for different departments as well. So before finishing off this video, I want to go over a quick example here. So let's say now instead of having one car, our factory is manufacturing two cars. We have the respective direct materials, direct labor for each. Manufacturing overhead, we don't know. We're going to apply it. But we know that the machine hours used to produce the first car, the lower end car, is 15 hours and for the higher end car it's 30 hours and the cost driver for overhead is machine hours right so that's what we're going to be using to apply the overhead and let's say that we're told that the estimated overhead or the manufacturing overhead for the year is 1,120,000 and then the estimated machine hours for the year is equal to 1,600 hours 
So how do we apply this overhead to each of these cars here? So the first thing we do, so I'm gonna write out some steps here, is we calculate something called a predetermined overhead rate. Right? It's very similar to how we got the manufacturing overhead before. Basically, it's the estimated overhead for a period that you're looking at. Usually, it's going to be a year. So it's the estimated overhead over the estimated amount of cost driver. And again, that cost driver could be anything, uh, direct labor, machine hours. In this case, we're told it's machine hours. It's always going to tell you in the question what the cost driver used is going to be to get that overhead. So we first get a predetermined overhead rate. So um, what we do is we take the estimated overhead for the year. So we got 1,120,000 divided by the estimated amount of cost driver for the year, 1,600. Right? Both of these have to be the exact same period. And when you do that, you would end up getting $700. And so that's the predetermined overhead rate. Actually, this is $700 per uh, machine hour. Right? So every time you use a machine hour, you have to apply $700 worth of overhead to that product. And then once you have this, once you have your predetermined overhead rate, you just apply the overhead. And you apply the overhead to each product. Uh, it might be each job, as we'll see. Um, in this case, it's to each product. So for the first car, so for car one, the manufacturing overhead is going to be the predetermined overhead rate, 700 times the number of machine hours it uses, 15. So it's going to be 10,500. So that would go over here. So 10,500, and then the car two, manufacturing overhead, is going to be that predetermined overhead rate of 700 times 30, which is 21,000. So that's going to be here for the higher end car. Right? And so notice how better that is, or more relevant, right? There's less manufacturing overhead applied for the lower end car versus more manufacturing overhead applied for the higher end car. And that's because we divided it by a certain cost driver, not by the number of cars. If we divided it by the total number of cars of car one and car two, that's estimated for the year, then these values would be the same, right? And that wouldn't be appropriate, right? So that's just a higher level of how we apply overhead. Again, as uh, we do more examples, we're gonna get more and more specific, but just wanna give you kind of a higher level before getting more technical.